And this is the entrance to Gorchin Glen Forest Park. And look at the carving that has been done here. Not great. Wow. I wonder who was responsible for that. That's fabulous. We are at Gorchin Glen in the car park and it is massive. The two of them are massive. So we've got a mountain bike trail, we've got a walking trail head, we've got an amenity building and we've got forest classroom. And I hear goat crest singing. We've got all these fir trees, pine trees. And here's a wee bit about the history of Gorch and Glen. There's a thousand acres in here apparently. Dates from 1960s. How fashions have changed. Six walking trails. Uh, some of them are harder than others. So there you are. There's supposed to be toilets up here, but they're closed. Why are they closed? Don't know. And there's a play park. There's the forest classroom, and here there's the map. And there's, there's the different trails, varying in length. And we might follow the pollen trail which follows the pollen burn. And a big mess of fish having a bath. And he's having a good bath. This is a pollen walk and it's crisscrossed by uh, cycle tracks. So you need to be careful somebody doesn't come bombing around the corner. But it's, it's quite a degree here today, apart from the bird song. There's a few foxglove out there. And we're just listening to your uh, long tail tits here. There's one right there somewhere, but just can't get onto it. They're so, they move about so fast. Ah, there it is. Gotcha. 
All sorts of wee plants. Don't know what these are. Are they orchids? Don't think so. But nevertheless, super. That's the ladies' trail. Yeah, this is the I presume it just goes down back down the other side. As I say, a thousand acres in here, which is fabulous. And the soil depth in here is very, very shallow, as evidenced by the number of trees that have come down, and we have seen them along the pathway here. The, there is no depth of soil to hold these trees and if there's any breath of wind you know approaching a storm then the weaker trees just and and the ones in shallower situations just topple and they take other trees with them and in a big wind not so many years ago, they lost a thousand trees in one night. And we've moved into the forest. I think this is sap. I think. to tell. And there are pine marten in here and there are red squirrels in here but your chances of seeing them are minimal. I think that's sap. A lot of trees have actually been felled to provide space for the other ones and they've just left them. Well, they, they do provide habitat. Don't know what kind of pines these are but they're very straight. And there is a red squirrel up ahead, just off the pathway. Is he behind that tree? Oh yes, I see him. Oh, you wee swing, you. Excellent. Excellent. I see you. Tanya spotted this boil. Brilliant. Oh, well, there he is. I've got him. Oh, got him again. Is he behind the log again? Mm -hmm. Stupid log. There he is.
got him. He's away again. He's <laughs> keeps hiding. That was super. Super duper duper. And we think that there were tree creepers there too, but I could only keep the camera on the red squirrel. And it's absolutely remarkable what the forestry people have done to maintain this forest and maintain bridges and, and such like, and, and put in piping to stop erosion. And this has all been done over the last 50 years since this place got going. And we saw the squirrel up there on that rise. And we only saw it for several seconds because the wee blader wouldn't stay still. But nevertheless, red squirrel filmed. And you know, this to me and Tanya is the icing on the cake. We've had a super time here at Oma and hopefully we'll come back and do more walks. And this is us coming back to the car park. Been out for about an hour. Pleasant riverside walk. Seen a red squirrel and being able to film it, seen long tail tits, being able to film them as well and just enjoy the dander. <laughs>